Good evening, and welcome to Meet My Little Mrs. Friday. It's me, the Livingston Man, all by myself. If you've never been here before, who am I kidding? Just me and Teresa in here right now. Hello, Teresa. Oh, and Michigan Outpost, too. Wow, holy, two people, you guys. All right, enough of all this prepping and survival. Oh, my goodness, the sky is falling. Go tell it on the mountain, all this. Enough. Uh, I'm going to talk to you all about all these cool little ladies that surround me all the time. And maybe if you're a guitar person, you noticed them and you were like, what he's got there? What is that thing? See me play them maybe sometimes. I kind of know how to play guitar. I'm not one of these nuts, though. Uh, this is not a collection, per se. Uh, I play these guitars. I use them. They're like tools in a box rather than like pieces in a museum. None of these are worth shit, right? I mean, new, probably the, I, the most I got in here is maybe I got like a guitar that's like $1,000. But what I've done is put together a, a versatile collection of guitars. And um, uh, guitar has always been a really cool thing to me. Just the word guitar just hits right, right? Guitar. Oh, it's cool, right? Fender guitar. It just hits hard. So what I thought I would do is maybe you're just interested or maybe you're not and just here to like Yardbirds is, is just to listen to me go off the rails and you know it's going to happen. It's just tight. All you got to do is wait. It's going to happen. But I thought I'd show them off and uh, explain what they do, why I have them um, and why I have like many of them. Uh, there is a reason for it. Like, you know, gun guys know what I'm talking about, where it's like, you know, isn't that exactly the same as your other one, babe? And you're like, no, no, it's different. It's different. You know, it's not, it's not that. Like, you know, it looks exactly the same, though. But, well, you know, on the inside, it's totally different. You wouldn't get it. You know, it's technical stuff, you know. So it's, it's my, that's my guitar collection. But, you know, what I'm going to do is hem and haw for a while and let some people get in here because I was worried at first. I'm like, damn, I'm just going to give a live stream to nobody. I already do that all day. I talk to myself like a crazy man. I don't need to do it on YouTube, too. Uh, welcome, like, everybody. Cool, man. Thanks for coming by, everybody. You guys are awesome. Um, yeah, it's about the guitars tonight. We're going to talk about the guitars. I'm going to school you about some guitars. See, Livingston Man has been known to ramble and say some shit that don't make no sense. But this, believe it or not, I actually know about. Maybe I'll show you a thing or two. Maybe I'll, you'll learn something. No, no. Of course, you know, unless you're going to go buy a guitar or really care about it, it's all useless knowledge anyway. But you can say, hey, I know what a headstock is or, you know, how guitar pickups work. And you'll say, you know, the Livingston man showed me that. And that's what's going to happen. All right. At 10 viewers, I love you guys. Thanks again for coming out. Let me see if I can do this mic thing. Michigan Outpost, Dusty Country Road, Yardbirds, uh, Fox Fire, Wolf Fang. Robert Lanahan, that's my boy. Um, love and life. Hello, Teresa Buchanan as well. And I think that's everybody. Cool. That was easy. So let's start it off real simple, right? Y'all seen one of these things. This here's the old grandpa's guitar. Yeah. <laughs> it's an acoustic guitar. It's called that because it, uh, actually this one does have electronics, but it uses a big thick hollow body to resonate. It's got six old bronze steel alloy strings on it. It makes noise on its own. It doesn't need an amplifier. Why do we call it that? Acoustic guitar starts with, okay, ready? From top to bottom, headstock, tuners, nut, <laughs> fret board, the piece of wood, frets, the Horizontal pieces of metal, of course, the strings, sound hole, bridge, saddle pins, top, sides, back. Easy enough. Okay, and so this guitar has a cool story to it. A uh, punk band I was in, loud, noxious, use those ugly ones over there for that band. And they said, you know, you, gotta, you guys want to play... Um, like an acoustic show at like a coffee shop. And we're like, okay. Um, I literally didn't own an acoustic guitar. I like did not have one of these that was worth a, a crap. Um, and so I got this one, why it has electronics in it and a Fishman preamp, okay. That uses, all right, I don't wanna get too technical with you guys. The reason I got the guitar, okay. It's got electronics so that I could amplify it. They had us playing outdoors to like the general public, but they wanted it acoustic. So, you know, we're, 
we're out there jamming, you know, freaking punk songs, you know, like. But it sounded like that with drums and everything else, but acoustic, but I needed something that I could amplify so it could be heard better. So I go to this place um, that's no longer with us. It was called Mark's Music. It was right there in Rhinebeck, New York. And I went in here and I had like 150 bucks in my pocket, like the, for whatever. And I'm like hoping to God I can buy an electric acoustic guitar for like 150 bucks. And this thing is, it's an Ibanez, like beginner level guitar. I think I paid a buck 30 for it and made him throw in a case. Uh, and then I used it for that show. And then I probably like, I forgot I owned it. It lived in a case for like eight years. And then I finally went and picked it up. I was like, oh my God, uh, whoa, I got an acoustic guitar and like the strings are still good and everything. And so it's just been sitting there like uh, out of its case, eight years. Uh, and it just came into the studio as it was. Fun times with that guitar. And uh, you've seen me pick around with that one on the, uh, perhaps the Hudson Valley Prep and, and Survival channel a little bit. It's a great guitar for the $130 I paid for. You gotta be kidding me, like totally not bad guitar. It's an Ibanez, it's an Ibanez. That's a really long model number. We don't care about that. It's the $139 one. So acoustic guitars is where like most people should start playing guitar, um, but nobody does. Cause first of all, I mean, it's not cool. It's not cool. Look at this. Any of those over there, or you, which one you want, kid? You want you want that? You want those, or, or you want like that? But they're a little bit harder to play, and they are not very forgiving. Like if you screw up, you're gonna hear it. You got no distortion to hide behind, no effects in this electric shit. And I'm a firm believer that what people should do is what I kind of had to do is learn to play an acoustic guitar first, or in uh, in some cases, you know, get if you want if your child wants to play a guitar. Start them with an acoustic guitar, however much they don't want one, because one, they're cheap. Uh, two, as soon as you go the electric route, there's an amp involved now, and now they're sucking mad loud. Uh, and so the acoustic guitar also lets you tame that, the suck factor down. Okay, Eddie Van Halen sucked at first, okay? Nobody's born knowing how to do this. Maybe Keith Richards was probably born knowing how to do this, and I think maybe that guy from Muse is like from another planet where they the language they speak Jimi hendrix too sorry so some people are born knowing how to speak this the rest of us are not so an acoustic guitar is a great I, i'm looking at the camera so I, it's backwards so i keep pointing the wrong way but the acoustic guitar is a great place to start for many reasons and once you can play an acoustic guitar because it has heavier strings when you grab an electric oh it's like off to the races but if you if you do that in the reverse yeah it doesn't not to mention, I've seen it a million times. I used to be a guitar teacher. Um, I taught like kids how to play like the basic stuff, like get them playing chords and just you know making music with the thing. I don't, I don't know how to do all this crap. I, I can fake that, but I don't know how to do that. So I, it wasn't my job to try to teach kids how to do that. But I saw it so many times. They get a, a, a guitar that's worth too much for their skill level, which at this point is like zero. Uh, and then you get some amp, it's loud. The guitar is like, a, they don't, I don't, I don't wanna say they don't deserve this guitar, but like you haven't earned like this level of guitar yet. And then what happens is the parents just out six, seven hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. But then like, you don't even, you don't follow that. And like, you know, it just sits in the corner and then I end up buying it at the pawn shop. So if you or your child wants to learn how to play the guitar, I would recommend an acoustic. They are inexpensive. They are, the volume is self-regulating and you're the only one who gets to hear you suck and it, that can help you build confidence. Nobody wants to put on a show while they're trying to learn. So, my spiel about the acoustic, because really it's not a very special guitar at all. It's extremely like a dime a dozen guitar. But it's the only one I got, so I like it. Now, moving on to, let's see what else. Of course, I got this bass guitar. This is a obliger obligatory. I don't, really play the bass, but uh, because I know how to play the guitar, I sort of know how to hit the notes on a bass. One, you'll notice this thing's huge compared to the other guitars because basses are tuned an octave lower than guitars are. So this has a 34 inch scale, they call this, from here to here, 34 inch, uh, so that you can tune those strings down and still keep tension on them. Also, they're extremely heavy compared to guitar strings. Wow, look at that wobble, isn't that cool? So, yeah, I, I have this just because we have a studio and I need to put bass on stuff. 
Got that from a good buddy of mine. It was actually his. I traded him a, a guitar for it. Not I. Uh, the stories behind that guitar, I couldn't tell you because it really wasn't mine. She's kind of new here. I'm setting the place on fire. My bad aim at the ashtray. So who wants to go? Okay, I got one for you. This one here. It's a beautiful Fender Telecaster, isn't it? Nope. That's an Epiphone. It's uh, Epiphones are Gibson copies, like if um, like Ford Mercury or Lincoln Ford, perhaps. Um, that's what uh, Epiphone is to Gibson, like their stock brand. But what they've done here is physically copy an actual Fender Stratocaster, uh, Telecaster, that blue one right there. Same guitar, but like different company. Why I have this one uh, is because my Mrs. Livingston and my good boy Patty Roach actually collaborated and got me this from a pawn shop that homie uh, worked at. And it's in great shape and it sounds cool. It's got two single coil pickups. This is a classic Telecaster. This is what like one from the 50s would look like. Um, so it's got two single coil pickups. If you can guess why they call it that, it's because there's a single coil. What the guitar pickups are is there's a magnet. And sometimes these are made out of different things and this matters to tone. But in the case of that one, they're um, aluminum nickel cobalt uh, magnets. And they wrap copper wire around the magnet and then somehow magically it gets energized through hooking it to the amp and it makes it so that when you rake those metal strings, the magnet picks it up and makes it come out the speaker. Tesla shit. Um, so that one's got the classic, it sounds, even though it's a Gibson Epiphone, it's got the super classic Telecaster sound. Like it would have been the, one of the first like mainstream electric guitars in general. Uh, that you would hear. You've heard Telecasters. People, of course, still use them today. Everybody from Jim Root from Slipknot to John Five, uh, Marilyn Manson's guitar player, and then um, he went on to play with Motley Crue, I think, right? Telecasters will never go away. One of the, f the, the first kind of guitar Leo Fender of the Fender Guitar Company made with his bare hands. That's why it's kind of chunky and plain looking. He literally cut it with a bandsaw. Leo Fender didn't even play guitar, but he built at least two, and you know, uh, you could keep going, but Leo Fender's tradition that he has started with guitars back in 1954 or something like that, we still play him today. There's nothing to fix about him. Why Telecasters have stayed the same is because he got it right, like literally the first time. Nothing you could really do to change what he did. So it's got the classic tone, even though it's, you know, a fraud, it's not a real Fender. But when you plug it in, you get that 50s jangly tone out of it um also have keith richards you know killer uh he would tune it open and uh you know, honky tonk women stuff like this that's that's all classic keith with his telecaster so that's the epiphone and i got another epiphone again now these are uh because gibson's gibson's are too damn expensive they're made in the united states they're carved out of mahogany they have all this high-end features and then what they end up being is like this 15 pound one trick pony that just does oh it's a Les Paul it's like yeah cool so I saw a video where this guy was like there you need five guitars you know you need if you want if you're serious about being a guitar especially like a studio one you need five guitars right one of course was an acoustic guitar another was a, a Fender Telecaster or you know something equivalent right but then he said, you need like an ES-335. Now, what that is, is uh, you ever seen Chuck Berry or Back to the Future, the red guitar he, he jams out on? That's an ES-335. Uh, uh, it's called a semi-hollow body. It has electric pickups in it, but it's like a cross a little bit. So I didn't like that. They're big and bulky and they're, they're fragile. So I, again, my good buddy, Patty Roach, I, I called him up and I was like, you know, I want a guitar that's got, it's... It's a semi hollow body. It's got the two pick. It's like a Les Paul. And you know, and I, it would be cool if it had the Bigsby. This is called a Bigsby. This thing. It's not a whammy bar. And I'll hit you if you call it that. Um, and he, he, he like literally replies like five minutes later with a picture of this guitar. He said like this. And I was like, yes, just like that. So that's where this guy came from. Now, being a semi-hollow body, remember when I jangled the acoustic there? This one's got acoustic characteristics. It's also very out of tune. But you know, here, it's loud. It projects on its own. 
even without being plugged in. This one's interesting because unlike humbucker pickups, I right, remember when we talked about single coil pickups and how they got, get this, a single coil. Uh, these look like humbuckers. Now what humbuckers are is two coils. You would think it'd be, a, it's a double coil, but it's not it's humbucker, they call them. And so what they do is one coil is wound one way, and then a second coil is wound the other way, cancels out the 60 cycle hum that comes from your electrical system. Because we use 60 hertz, which means it vibrates at a 60 hertz frequency. Uh, single coil pickups will pick that up. What these are, are oversized single coil pickups. They're called P90s. Actually, these are called dog ear P90s because they have this triangle here. Uh, they bolt to the top of the guitar. Um, the only difference between regular P90s and a dog ear is that uh, regular P90s are meant to be recessed. Dog ears are mounted to the surface. Got it? Cool. Following me? So this thing has a three-way switch. You can pick one pickup, the other pickup, or both pickups. It has, <laughs> honestly, too many volume controls. I'm not even sure why I have all these volume controls. I never use them. But again, it's just a cool guitar. It fills a gap. Uh, in the guitar ensemble, but that is still unique on its own. It's not some standard thing. It's it's, it's different. It, and when you play guitars, they feel different and they make you play differently because they feel different or they, they have a sound to them and you're like, oh, I know what I should do with that. Now, let me see. Is that the Epiphone collection? As you can see, they've been looking like some grandpa's guitars lately. Now, I want to move up because I got some favorites over there. So let me show you my latest creation. I touched on this on the live stream last night. This is, I call this thing Fernando because he's a Fernandes vertigo, which I assume comes from the strange body shape. When I got this, it was a plane. See the two coils right there. Okay, I see the two single coils wired together makes a humbucker. Got it? It's a real word. Uh, what I did with this guy is I ripped all his guts out uh, and I put these brand new Seymour Duncan Invader pickups in it. Um, they are some of the loudest, hottest, heaviest pickups you can kind of get. And I just wanted to turn the thing into a metal monster. Like really all it fucking does is go. But when it does it, it's killer. And it plays like a champ. It's got a rosewood fretboard, stainless steel jumbo frets, which makes it really like. Very nice to play, very smooth. It's now very loud. I ripped the tone control right out and put a radiation symbol on it. Uh, so it goes full bore through the volume right to the output jack and that's done. Uh, Fernando is a really dumb, simple piece of wood guitar. Knew this thing probably would have been 350. Uh, I got it from the, from the pawn shop. My man, Patty Roach, once again, um, I think I paid 200 bucks for it. This was supposed to be my brother-in-law's first guitar. So we brought it home, you know, I strung it up for him and cleaned it and everything. And then he like literally never touched it again. And I said, give me that fucking thing. And now I have it and she gets her ass wrecked all the time. But yes, for now, look, I didn't even finish building it yet. Fresh, fresh and hot. But yeah, this thing is just an absolute monster. For being a cheap, simple guitar, it does exactly what I want it to do, which is just chug. It goes, grrr, chugs. How long have I been at this? 10 minutes and 33 seconds. Anybody here? I'll take some questions. Samurai Viking Lumberjack, what's good, bro? I ain't seen y'all ass in a minute. Greenleaf, uh, Robert Linhan's still here. We got, all right, how's everybody doing? I can't really read the chat and talk at the same time. You guys know how I am. Wolfang, you know, a lot of my guitars are blue because I kind of like it myself. That and the, um, the sunburst colors you see these two over here with. Because uh, otherwise, colors to me on guitars are either too loud or like too plain, like I, black guitar is just so boring to me. Like maybe if it had like gold hardware or something and was like super cool, but I mean, just an all black guitar, eh, I don't know, too plain. Now, of course, David Gilmore might beg to differ. I'm gonna smoke a little bit more of my cigarette. Are you guys having fun? I'm looking at the chat now. Do you possibly have any questions, any shit you wanna talk, whatever? Yardbirds is back with us, that's cool. He's in and out these days. He's semi-lucid, I think they call it. When I first started, now there's some guitars missing from the collection here. Uh, when I first started playing the guitar, I had this old like um, like knockoff Fender Strat. I used it. It was called Whitey, just because it was white. 
uh, but it had like a sparkle finish and it, like the pickups were set into the body. It was like a little bit special. Um, I, I've never really seen another one before. That was the first guitar I slammed on and like sort of like busted my chops, you know, learning how to play and, you know, paying my dues, right? Um, and I had so many other ones too that like I remember them, but they like, they just weren't for me. I had a Warmoth, which is like a mail order company. You order the parts and you put together the guitar yourself. And I, I bought one that this guy had built. And again, it just, I didn't like it. It did cool stuff, but I just didn't like it. I don't know, like Dan Electro. It's made out of uh, Formica, like the same stuff they uh, make your uh, plastic countertops out of. Uh, Dan Electro has made guitars like this. Uh, even the neck, the only, I think the only piece of wood on the guitar was its fretboard, but even the neck was plastic. And a very weird sound to it, but not for me kind of thing. Um, so many guitars, but I mean, these ones are the ones that have stood the test of time. Like I, I'm not ever selling them. I'm not getting rid of them. They are me. And you know what? Let's break it down right now. I'm going to show you the one that is probably the most me. Well, thing, those ovations with the round back, I always thought they were, they sounded good because they projected well, but they were really weird to hold. Like it always tried to roll off of you or like try to lay itself flat and you're constantly kind of fighting it with your neck hand. Uh, this here is my beloved blue Fender Stratocaster. Actually, it's Daphne blue. I don't, it might look a little gray to you guys because it's a pale blue color. Uh, this is actually a Tom DeLonge Try to get that right. Sorry, sorry. Can you read it? Tom DeLonge Signature Edition Fender Stratocaster. Not the good one, though. This one's made in Mexico. Uh, but when I first got it, it had a, a sparkly white pick guard on it. It was garishly loud. It had one pickup, one volume. That's it. Classic Blink 182 era. Look up a picture of the dude from Blink 182. You'll see him playing this guitar, but like it looks different. Because what I did. Uh, it was a very, very one trick pony. Right? I got one loud pickup at one volume. That, so all it does is be loud. And I was like, you know, I was in a cover band. I kind of needed it to do like a little more than that. So I got a pre-wired pick guard for it. So all these pickups, uh, the, the electronics already pre-wired. All I had to do was wire it to the output jack, screw it down, put strings on it, rock and roll. All right. So what it's got is a, this is a JB bridge pickup. It stands for Jeff Beck. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. But see now, here's the funny thing. These look like single coils, but see how they have two rows of screws in them? Because they're mini humbuckers. They fit in a single coil slot. So this guitar is quiet, but loud. Wrap your head around it. So it's a JB, it's an overwound bridge pickup. Uh, everybody uses this. Billy Joel Armstrong has one. Uh, um, Derek Wibley from Sum 41 uses them. If you like that loud chainsaw punk guitar sound, quite possibly a JB involved there. To keep the Strat's middle position wide open, now think of the intro to uh, Sweet Home Alabama. That That's a Stratocaster using its middle pickup. It gets that quacky sound, they call it. So they call this thing a duck bucker. You'll see that it's uh, on the base side, the poles, poles, they call those screws in it, are closer to the bridge. But the high side, they're closer to the neck. So what that pickup does is balance them out. None of, even though the strings are heavier and or lighter, they're not pushing each other out of the mix. And then you can also like combine the two. You can have this one, these two, this one, these two. See what I'm doing? And in the neck position, it's got the classic pickup like you might hear. Uh, it's called a 59. Now imagine the intro to um, Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses. That, that sound, that's what the neck pickup sounds like. And this one has a, a reasonable copy of something like that. So what this pickup combination lets me do is I sort of have, I have a classic Strat and I can also kind of pull in like a, a less Paul tone up here in the neck uh, and maybe even fat, like big sort of Pink Floyd lead tones. Um, but just with one guitar and they're all voiced to do different things. This is my absolutely beloved guitar. This is my first one. Where, uh, if, if you're talking to me, my guitar journey, like I, I, when I put my feet down and was like, I, I do this now, it was this guitar. I think I got this for like my 20th birthday or, or 20th Christmas or something like that. And she's been with me ever, ever since. 
I'll, I'll, you'll notice something about her twin. They're not identical. Is that this guitar, oh, damn it. <clears throat> this guitar is about seven years old. This guitar is like 22 years old. They are the same color. But see how Stratocaster is like greenish now? That is from thousands of hours of cigarettes and bars and gigs and going everywhere all the time with me. This guitar is me. I love this guitar. It is my favorite guitar. Sorry, ladies. This is my bottom bitch right here. Let's move on to her sister, though. This one's heavy. This is a real Telecaster, so it's just a fucking chunk of pop, uh, alder with a straight-up maple neck and fretboard. Uh, it's batted out of one piece and with a skunk stripe on the back. Now, what's in here is a, what's called a truss rod. See that nut hole at the end right there? There's a bolt in there and a, an anchor collar kind of thing at the end of the neck. And as the strings pull on the neck, it wants to bend, right? What the truss rod does is tightens the neck so it can't do that. Or you can adjust it so it makes sure it plays right and doesn't buzz. I call this guitar 11 because at the time it was the 11th guitar that I owned. Now here, again, what I've done is take what's supposed to be a standard Telecaster, um, given the list of, you know, you need five guitars. Now, I already had a standard Telecaster, but when I saw this, and they knew I wanted it because they wouldn't stop on, on social media. They, every time I log into Facebook and they're like, you see this thing? I'm like, I can fucking see that thing. And I was ready to start a GoFundMe to get it because she's just a beaut, and then she matches my other one, so it's just cool. Uh, but what this one has is, again, two humbuckers in it instead of two single coils like a, a typical Telecaster would have. So this one has a louder, more full sound than a Telecaster would, as well as being quiet, it doesn't buzz. Uh, and then what it does is when you flip it to the, all right, so like bridge position pickup, both neck position. What this one does that's interesting is that when it clicks into the middle position, it cuts one coil off of each pickup. So you get the big fat standard that tone, and it's still, because you have two coils, doesn't make noise, but you're not running both full humbuckers at once because it's just too loud. And it's a cool feature they put in there. Once again, this girl is made in Mexico. She's a hard, hard tail, they call that. The strings go right through those holes in the back right there. Come out the front, the bridge. Doesn't move, no, no vibrato tail piece there. Some people, heathens mostly call them whammy bars. And, uh, Interestingly enough about this one, because I think besides the other telly, uh, both of them have maple fretboards. I always wanted a maple fretboard guitar, um, but I do find it to be very different than the uh, like rosewood fretboard, like say an acoustic has or oh, shit, all the other ones do. Uh, it has a snappier sound uh, and it's glossy and it literally does make it I don't know that it makes it sound different. I think it makes the player think it sounds different, but it definitely makes it feel different. So you can never go wrong with a, just a plain old Fender Telecaster. It's literally just two freaking chunks of wood cut very simply. Uh, a, a standard, absolutely legendary guitar. Why I love it so much. I don't play it uh, very much, but because the Stratocaster is just too cool. But she is welcome in my house because she is just pretty. Doesn't she sort of remind you of like a Texan blonde wearing jeans and like a silver belt buckle? Right? Can you see it now? Yeah, you can. Lean in there, sweetheart. Did we really go through them all that quick? How long have we been doing this? 13 minutes and 30 seconds. All right. I saved the funny one for last because the very axe has a lot of explaining to do. The Variax is a whole different thing. Uh, to the point where I, I catch myself referring to it differently, like uh, the Variax, that one with the white pickups in it sitting there, is a guitar, yes. Uh, but I find myself referring to the other ones as real guitars and the Variax not. There's a reason. The Variax is very much a real guitar. It 
has pickups, volume controls, tones, switch can act as a real guitar. It's plain old, uh, probably a better representation of an actual Stratocaster than my Stratocaster, because my blue Strat's been modded. Cool one I showed you there. This is what like, all right, automatically, if you know what I'm saying here, this is like, looks like Stevie Ray Vaughan's guitar, right? Except for red eyes, I did that. Uh, so then you know what I'm saying. Big, fat, punchy, uh, imagine the houses are rocking, don't come, and knocking that loud, but clean, twangy tone that was coming from a, a strap akin to this one. Um, the very axis, very, very, it's a normal guitar. Does all the cool stuff. But what the Variax can do is hidden behind this secret control plate right here. It has what's called a piezo bridge in it. Now it has these little things that, uh, these are magnetic pickups. This is how pickups work, magnets. Piezos work by vibration. What you can do is press a button and turn on the piezos, which are now sensing the vibration of the string. The pickups have nothing to do about it. What it can then do is use I suppose what they're doing is using EQ models and whatever else to mimic the sounds of other guitars. So what the Variax can be is essentially every guitar. By flipping a knob, you can change from a Telecaster, a Stratocaster, a Les Paul, a 335, a White Falcon, a 12 string, uh, even acoustic guitars and even a banjo. If you ever heard the uh, We All Gonna Die Wednesday theme song? played it on this. Sounds like a banjo, but it's not. It's this. Um, so the Variax is super cool. And not only that, which is very, very hard to explain. And if you really want a better in-depth idea of what something like a Variax does, go find a video about one. Because there's a lot. There's a lot about it. But so the idea was that I had these other guitars that this guy was like, you know, five guitars back to that of course i ended up five guitars turned into one two three four five six seven eight eight plus a couple more that are in the works uh but so what i decided to do is the very axe was a little expensive and i happened to get a tax return that could afford it so i was like hell with it i'm buying it because i thought what it would do is that i had these five guitars and that this one could do every, okay, so then whatever other guitars there were besides these five, this thing could do. Just to cover all my bases. I have a, this is my studio I'm in here. I don't have room for 35 guitars. I don't have the patience for 35 guitars. I don't have the bank account for 35 guitars or more. I, what do you even do with them? How are you going to act? Like, you even like the guitars. Like, you got guitars in, like, storage units, like, locked in cases. Like, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know how you do it. Now, if you got museum showpieces, fucking cool. But if you're just a player, I don't know that you need 35 guitars, man. I, may, I don't think it's the guitar. It's you at that point. But some people go flipping crazy for him. There's a guy, uh, Joe Bonamassa. He's, like, this blues kind of player guy. Has, like, this amazing guitar collection of some of the like most prized pristine pieces in guitar history um who else is big in huge i mean i know like the dudes from pearl jam literally have like a storage unit full of guitars between the two of them and i mean i get that because you can afford it bro not me and i mean just the strings alone like i mean let's say if strings are 20 bucks a set i'm out like i'm pushing 200 dollars to you know put strings on these things like that's that's a bill, okay? That's a bill right there. Well, thing I I can teach people how to make it make music. Um, and then I was always a big one of, once you understand the fundamentals of how to do it, you should do you. You can do it wrong and still do it right. You know, it just depends on the, music is very, very fickle in that way. But a, a guitar, there's a, a big difference between someone who knows how to play one and one that doesn't. Um, and it really just boils down to a bit of rhythm and just knowing how to play chords. A couple of things I did when I was first learning how to play is I got a, uh, like an Esteban. Remember that guy? You know, cowboy looking dude and he teach you how to play the guitar. Like I had one of them uh, videos and I'll just watch it over and over again. And like that helped and I could learn how to play the chords and understand some of the, you know, the things out of tune it for one. Um, 
kind of put strings on it if necessary. A lot of people get handed a, a hand-me-down guitar and it's like, the reason they don't like it is because it like needs work. Um, it's not a piece of shit, it just needs to be set up. Uh, so there are these, those silly little like intro to guitar videos can totally help you out there. And YouTube especially. I mean, there is a billion people out here trying to teach you everything from the ba most basic shit to the most advanced stuff. Um, but yeah, I essentially taught myself. I had like two lessons um, just to sort of learn how to like play like solos really. And um, even that, you end up making them up as you go. As long as they're in key, who cares, right? Uh, but self-taught works. You can do it. I did. I've also been playing a guitar for like 30 years. Um, so if I if I make it look easy or something, I mean, that's probably why they're just very comfortable in my hands and I just know what to do with it. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, but I would encourage anybody, um, it's cheap to get into now. You can get yourself an affordable little starter pack if it was something you wanted to do. Probably like 200 bucks. Uh, if you buy something from Fender and or their uh, Mercury brand, uh, Squire, they offer a subscription, like it's, I think it's 60 bucks a year or something, and you can subscribe to like Fender Guitar Company, like how to play guitar. And it's legit because what they want to do is they want people to learn how to play the guitar because then they'll buy guitars. Uh, it works. So many people have sworn by. I've seen like plenty of people learn how to play. There's people out there who have been playing way less time than I am. They're way better than I am. Uh, I, I can sit here and brag like I'm some good guitar player. I'd call myself competent. I can play along with the song. I can, and it, a lot of times what that involves is knowing when not to play. So many people. Are they excited? I mean, like, yeah, I don't make oh, noise. And you're like, would you shut the fuck up? Like, why are you playing a solo in the verse right now, bro? Like, and the second thing is, I'm going to speak personally here. I can respect and take seriously a rhythm guitarist who is competent, but doesn't necessarily play a lot of solos, right? I cannot really entertain a, a, a lead player. Somebody who's like, I only play solos. Like, I, I can't respect you like what do you mean because you can't play chords but i'm gonna trust you with the solo okay see i've seen this play out and what that usually boils down to is people skipping fundamentals and they're going right to right to some you know fucking shred axe from they're like look what i'm doing and it's like yeah look, i wish you could see what you're doing right now you, you look ridiculous you're but then, and then what are you going to do? You're going to, while, while the rest of the band is playing the song, you're just literally going to stand there until it's time to play the solo and then stop. Okay. Uh, sure thing. Cool. Um, you keep breaking what E string? Uh, the high E string is possibly is just that you need to use heavier strings. If you're breaking your low E string, um, what kind of guitar are you playing? Yeah, metal strings. All right. Um, sometimes, uh, what can happen? I have a tendency to shred strings off the guitar cause I play hard, especially when I'm standing up. Um, I play like the green day guy. I'm like more with my shoulder and elbow than with my wrist. And you know, it, I, I came from playing up like in live bands and stuff. The studio stuff came later. So it, it was a the showmanship involved with a little bit with how I play, you know, make it look like you're having fun. Another thing, listen, you're in a band. Okay. For, for the love of God, you guys still see me? Cool. You're jamming out on stage. You're in your band, okay? You're, you, you don't can do this. Like, I don't care how awesome your fucking song is. If your band looks like they're not having fun, like, I don't like this song. Like, I don't care if the song you're playing is dog crap, crap. Everybody knows it. It's junk. But if you're having a good time and selling it, I'm, I'm in. I'm like, yeah, awesome. So... Please also do that. I know that practicing is very much different than performing. Practice how you intend to perform. If you're in some, if you're into like metal music and killer, like, you know, bang your head fucking music, well, then sitting in a chair, not doing that, yes, you're playing it accurate. You're, you're, you're crushing it. You're killing it. But if you were to ever got, you know, stand on stage and try to bring it to people, they're going to be like, what the fuck, bro? It looks bored. And you don't want to look bored. Um, you don't want to look like, and you also don't want to make it look like your songs are hard to play. Maybe complicated, yes, but not hard. Like, oh my God. 
<laughs> like if you take your eyes off it for a second, you'll fuck up. One of the first things I tried to learn how to do is once I learned how to play all the chords, uh, tune the guitar, very fundamental stuff, hold the pick, you know, all this. I saw Tom Petty playing uh, in some televised concert or whatever. And I noticed that he was playing a guitar, and but that he, he was singing and he wasn't looking at the guitar. And I was like, he can play the guitar without looking at it. So another thing, the, the next thing I sought out to do was to be able to learn to, to play like basic chord structures without looking at the guitar. Uh, one, just because it's very awkward to sing and look at the guitar at the same time. You end up making this face and this voice. Um, two, it's again like just, I mean, sometimes you got to like have a look, like you're going to just make sure you're going to hit that one thing there. But I mean, if you just stand it, you cannot... Break yourself of staring at the guitar when you're playing. Uh, and work your way up. Just pick three chords and sit there and stare off into space and play them. And just get used to doing it without looking at it. And eventually it'll come second nature to you. And you won't have to, your, your left hand won't need to be told what to do. Or right hand, depending. If you're a left-handed guitar player, one in the chat, but I mean, y'all just look weird. I, uh, it's like a whole different instrument. I, I don't think I could teach a left handed person how to play the guitar because I'd be like ah I don't know what you're doing man that's so weird and your guitar is weird and oh god it's all so weird I love guitars some of my favorite things I'm actually a pretty good drummer too but I seriously have no room for a drum set in here also it would just be so loud that I'd be like yo you guys check this out and just, just blow everything out there's no way if you are interested in learning how to play the guitar, the first step is get one. And then just, there are so many resources out there to learn. And I, I promise you it is unfamiliar at first and can be frustrating. You literally have to build up like the, the strength in your hand to push the strings down. You need dexterity. You have to like learn how to curve them funny to, to do stuff and then it hurts. The tips of your fingers at first, you literally have to build up calluses or it hurts. But it, if, if you stick with it and once you've done all that, I mean, you can just go ahead and like wheel up and just grab a hold of one. And... and just start smashing the thing with confidence because um, you stuck it out. I appreciate so many of y'all coming here tonight. I mean, all freaking 12 of you. I mean, amazing. And I got 12 likes. Wow. Everybody who showed up liked it. All right. That's hundred percent. You guys, that's a hundred percent. hundred percent. These fucking cigarettes don't stay lit neither. It's a good thing. What if I forgot about it and the house burnt down you guys? Yeah. I had a live stream. Teresa, I thought you were here the whole time. Crikey. Well, you can always catch the replay. I did set it up to do that. One of these days, I'll plug in some of my other like weird guitar tech to show you. I really just wanted to introduce you guys to the guitars. Uh, I also have some really neat gadgety things that make the guitar sound all funny and do all kinds of stuff, but that's probably going to be for another video. Um, as well as I, I, me, a Patty Roach and myself, we do uh, the music for the most part for the Hudson Valley Prepping and Survival Channel. So maybe one of these times we'll bring you along and show you how we did like uh, even like the theme music for We All Gonna Die Wednesday. It was uh, actually took like probably something like 15 minutes, smashed it together real quick. And that was the, the end of it. Um, we use a, a fast workflow. It's efficient. We use computers, uh, but the computers don't have a, a, a make music button that we just push and let it do it. We have to pull the guitars off the walls and we have to perform the parts and, and do the stuff. And it's fun. It's fast. You can get like change your whole tones instantly. We know about, we, I mean, so much cool stuff you can do as a musician or an artist these days, as long as you can decide what you want and how you're going to do it. Because again, there are just a billion options, even in that regard. You want I have a giant half stack, you know, 100 watt, 412 cab, all this. I just don't have the fucking room for it. It's like, you know, you should bring that home. It was my gig rig. You know, I was blast shows with the thing. So like, you ought to bring that home. I'm like, it's a piece of furniture. I'm like, what are going to put a fucking cushion on the thing and sit on it? It's a new table now. Look at this fucking conversation piece over here. 
and it's 300 watts. I turn this thing up, I blow the windows out the house. I can't even use it. And you know, but I'll never get rid of it because one day, one day a neighbor's gonna be next door blasting some BS ass music or something. I'm just gonna be like, Marty McFly that shit and just fucking crank it up, put your flugs in and be like, Sonic boom. Um, so many reasons I could go on about guitars. I mean, uh, if you're a rock and roll fan, if you're a country music fan, if you like jazz, uh, the electric guitar especially will just never cease to be a part of music. If you like music at all, uh, if it doesn't have guitars in it, it's not music. All right, there we go. I'll go there. Ha, fixed it. If you like music that has guitars in it, because only music that has guitars in it is music, uh, you love guitars. You maybe just don't even know it. Or you've heard guitars make noises that you didn't even know was a guitar because they do all this cool shit too. It was Jimi Hendrix taught us that. Jimi Hendrix taught us that the guitar didn't have to sound like a guitar. It could sound like fucking space aliens and shit. Um, guitars, oh, Jimi Hendrix, if you use effects at all, if unless you're some fucking tube amp purist and you're like, I only use it's 1945 spec fucking Russian vacuum tubes. I mean, cool, man. You probably think that the batteries in your effects pedals make it sound different, and that's fine too. Otherwise, most of us will use standard guitar effects, such as, you know, like a phaser or a distortion for one. Um, big loud fuzz sounds, delay, otherwise known as echo. Bam, 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 bam. Um, those are standard now. Like if you're a guitarist, you kind of like, you're expected to like have that at your disposal. Jimi Hendrix gave us that pretty much. Other guys, uh, big gain guys, you know, Metallica taught us about how to get them scooped mids. You take the mid range and turn it down. If you like, say you were doing a, a graphic EQ where you would do the V, that's the, the classic Metallica guitar sound. Jun, 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 jun. Super like punch you in the chest, but no mid range. You feel it, you don't hear it, get it? Eruption by Van Halen, you know, that's got the, uh, it's an MXR flanger and a, a modded Marshall amp to have extra gain. Plus he had a hand built guitar that he made himself, screwed a hot pickup in and called it a quits, bro. So from the most expensive freaking thing you can go out and afford to like some piece of shit you built yourself and just learn how to play. Like I said, Eddie Van Halen sucked. Uh, when he first picked up a guitar, sucked. And you know how I know that? Because everybody does. And then he stuck with it and he became Eddie Van Halen and even then played the same handmade ass guitar he learned on. So, you know, it runs the gamut from however you want to, whether you want to go to college and learn how to do it or you want to sit in your bedroom and suffer until you're good at it. It's achievable, man. Same with any musical instrument or uh, means of creation, right? Art, right? Whether you want to be a sculptor, a singer, a flautist, a painter, a gardener, a topiarist, perhaps you want to turn bushes into elephants and shit. It just takes practice and you can do anything, man. Mrs. Metal couldn't handle it. She's like, this guy's a fucking idiot. Yeah, just try living in his head. She might be right though. I mean, you know what? I am gonna try and stretch this out to about, I don't know, how long have I been doing this now? I don't know how to read these analytics. Mike might be here, help me out, bud. It's been a while. Shit, going on about 50 minutes? Fuck it, I'll just go the hour then. If you're sticking around, I'll just keep talking shit. I'm not gonna play the guitar though because um, a lot of my quick little just examples are other people's songs and I just don't wanna run fucking some copyright nonsense because of some little noodle I put in there. Wolf Fang, I also played the trumpet in high school and I wonder if it's the same reason that you picked the trumpet where you unless you were assigned to it. Otherwise they gave us the choice and listen, I picked the trumpet cause that shit had three buttons. And I was like, that's probably pretty easy compared to clarinets and saxophones and shit. I gotta put two hands on this thing. Like, ah, uh, uh, no sir, a trumpet with them three buttons. That looks fucking easy to me. And all you do is spit in a trumpet. You go, <laughs> and out the other side comes, <laughs> Copyright strike, here we go. But yeah, that's why I totally picked the trumpet. It just seemed easy to me. Um, 
Drums, the uh, reason I didn't get to play drums in school is because that's what every fucking kid wanted to play, is the drums and saxophone. So that everybody, they had 75 drummers and 65 saxophones. And so you didn't get to do that. Or if you did, they're like, I play the triangle. You're like standing there like, ding. Like, that's not, I'm in the percussion section. No, you're not. You're holding a metal triangle going ding, bro. <gasps> I played my part. Fuck out of here. Who said, who wasted time writing that into sheet music? Like you go ding sometimes. Like, is that do you really need to write that down? Come on. Triangulists. Get real. Go learn how to play the fucking timpani or something. At least you can hit one drum that's tuned to a note. Doom doom doom. It's been a really good time, you guys. I had I've wanted to do this for a while. I wanted to be able to just ramble on about something I actually know about instead of <laughs> like whatever else I get up to some of these times where I gotta stare and sift through the darkness of the bowels of my medulla oblongata just to pull up something strange to keep the conversation going. This time I didn't have to do that. Um, I'm gonna say it again. If you ever wanna learn how to play the guitar, get one, because you a little tricky to learn without one. Um, get one and then just just do it. Pick it up and friggin' just get, just do it. Watch a video on YouTube. Get yourself some Esteban treatment. Maybe a chord book. Uh, they have tablature, which is an interesting. It's like sheet music, uh, but instead of like the five lines for the notes, what it has is six lines for the strings, and it'll put numbers on the string of where you're supposed to like fret it. And through, by slow going, you can decode guitar parts through this, what they call a tablature. It's showing you how to play the riff in question. It's not hard, it just requires patience. And that's where most people stop playing guitars when they're not good automatically. Nobody was, except for Jimi Hendrix, Matt Bellamy, Stevie Ray Vaughan, and a bunch of people that ain't you or me, okay? That's why our names are not talked about when they speak of guitarists because we fucking suck compared to guys like that it's up to us to put in the work they showed us what to do but they they're not gonna speak through us okay it's your own voice and you gotta use it ain't no wrong way to do it but there is a couple of right things you ought to do uh, fundamental wise i couldn't say it enough they're super fun. And never mind getting into the fact that being electronic, you can just like start pulling parts off of them and changing them and doing them yourself. But car guys know what I'm talking about. You know, you get yourself a shell, you got that basket case you're going to put together, all right? Because then you get into that and the whole oh, changes everything. Now you're spending all your money on guitar parts and shit. Your wife's like, what about rent? Said, Fuck rent. Come and get it. Come get it. I got knobs coming. I got strings coming. I got new tuners for the fender coming. Fucking landlord can eat it, all right? Show up. You get some money, all right? So, you know, it's super fun hobby too. I mean, what else you want to go spend your money on? Guns and drugs and, you know, vice, all kinds of sin. Hmm? Ain't nothing in the Bible said, don't thou shalt not build sick guitars, bro. I didn't say that. Never said it. It's a great hobby. It's fun. Uh, it's something you can teach your kids or even do with them. Hey, hey, a kid wants to learn how to play guitar? You learn how to play guitar too, man. Wouldn't that be cool? That sounds kind of like fun. Plus, if you're better than them, you can be like flexing on them. Like, come on, keep up, keep up, kid. Hunter's here. Good to see you, brother. I'm sorry you're late. Um, I'm not sure you how, how into what I talked about you would be. I somehow managed to keep all these guys around. I can't believe it. I mean, all nine concurrent viewers, but I'll take it. I'll take it. We're here. We I introduced everyone to all of my guitars, Hunter. Um, they don't say much um, unless I make them. And we discussed how, like, what I wanted to do was really basic just examples of what these things were for and, like, the sort of sounds that they make. And to play those sorts of things would have got me in copyright trouble, and I just don't feel like it tonight. One of these times, though, maybe I'll go on Mike's Patreon and we'll just, you know, completely break all the copyright laws. And yes, jam tunes to the other thing you can do. All right. I used to do this also. I was talking about showmanship. How it's like, it looks a little boring if you stand there looking like you're giving a recital. Yes, you're playing it perfectly correctly. 
but I'm falling asleep anyway because you just look like you're not into it. What I used to do is I had this old like shit guitar that didn't work, but it didn't have any strings on it. But I would strap it on nonetheless and I would act like the rock star playing it. Like that's how I learned how to like jump around and like do, you know, stage stuff is with this guitar that didn't have strings on it. Just to get used to holding it and like, you know, the stuff that would happen. Like if you jump in the air with a guitar, it comes up and then it bounces when you hit. And believe it or not, it actually takes practice to do stuff like that and not fuck it up or drop the guitar and break it and shit. Um, so I used to do that. I would just like dance around more or less with a guitar that didn't have any strings on it. There's no wrong way to do it. Just a couple of right ways. 726. At the four minute mark, I'm going to start reading the com the comments here. <laughs> a real snare drum. That's wild. I, I bet you uh, your neighborhood loved to listen to your child learn to play the drums. Air guitar totally counts, I'm saying. Um, what else here? Now, Wolf Fang wants to jam some tunes. That's what I'm going to do when the stream's over. Music says more than words. Uh, I believe that music is a language in itself. Because um, say, say a piece of music that didn't exactly have words, right? It can be understood by anyone. It, it doesn't need a translation. It doesn't need a, a filter. It doesn't need subtitles. What it says is what it means, and you, you feel it. Uh, and what I used to say was that um, music's a cool language because anyone can understand it. But... It's sort of that only certain people can speak it, right? Uh, but it's also something that anyone can learn to speak as well as understand. I, I get a little borderline religious, spiritual, we'll call it. Uh, uh, music to me is a, a phenomenon. When you start to think about what it it is and how it works and how like certain notes got to be together to do a thing. And if, you, and if you don't, it's just wrong. It's almost math. Right. And it, it, music is just a whole this other thing, you know, <clears throat> the thing that keeps me going in my life. I'll tell you that much. Well, I've noticed that, you know, people read books, of course, people binge on TV shows, people like, you know, doom scroll the Internet. Uh, people music has always been like the thing, like we'll come home from work, we'll throw on the Spotify and like just let it play. Music, whether it's songs we know and like and sing along to, or whether it's some stuff that we never heard before in our lives, which to me anymore, even if a song sucks, I'm like, thanks for a song I never heard before. Uh, it, it, you know what I mean, man? If you like, you got that that local rock station, everything from the 70s, 80s, and today. Basically, you hear the same 15 fucking songs every fucking day. And to finally just hear a song either you never heard before or a song by an artist that they just don't play or something, you're like, holy cow. It's refreshing and awesome. And, you know, you can hear the same three fucking chords. Like, you know, I'll show you guys something. There's a comedy routine about this. If I can just pick up the pick. I cut off my fingernails and I can't pick up the guitar pick. But if there, there's a, a, a chord pro progression that you we have all heard a million times. You can take these same four chords and you can make a new song out of it and nobody will care. It's like every song or like every 50 song. Or like every punk rock song. They all like live in the same place. They all came from the same place. If you like a band or an artist, get into who they were into, where they learn it from, and then learn where they got it from. Then take it more, and then we all end up back at Beethoven or something probably. But it's it's always been the same. It'll always kind of be the same. And you, when people start to push the envelopes of music and get all fucking weird and artsy with it, it becomes cool. But then people always go back to them. Those four chords, that rock and roll, that country, that, that real music. Right. So, you know, you can sit there and tap around on, on keyboards and you can hit the push. You can push the, the make music button and you can get AI involved and all this. But did what I just did right there, did that look very hard? And I made that myself with my own two hands, even though I didn't write that. I think it, I don't think it matters who wrote 
any of those progressions I just played, but uh, I just played like 90% of like pop rockish, you know, music, popular shit you heard. Most of it kind of goes in there somewhere. You learn how to play five chords and you learn how to play like half the songs on the planet. All right. And that's kind of fun too. You said they're jamming out. I'm saying like you're cool at parties because you know how to play a song and shit. All right. You start smoking cigarettes and forget about it. You're fucking irresistible. They'll be throwing their dirty underwear at you, son. Rocking out those four chords. In case anybody's wondering, that's E minor, C, G, D. That's all you got to do. That's, that's every song. And of course, the louder the music, the better. Um, not only just because it, it, it punches deeper in the, and it, it gets that fucking shit out of you that, that was bugging you, uh, but you can literally hear it better too just because of how sound works. Um, loud music equals more frequencies. It means you can... I know it sounds stupid. I can turn it up. You can hear it better. Uh, what I mean is frequency wise. Um, bass is bassier. Treble is treblier. Mid range is mid rangier. You know, that's what I mean by that. La apparent loudness, they call that. That's for another day. It's 731. I'm so humbled and uh, thankful that y'all stuck around for what has got to be the, uh, at least I made sense most of the time on this one. So somebody please give me that. I'm going to let y'all get back to your lives this Friday night. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out. The ladies, uh, they, they, they appreciate you as well. You'll see more of them, of course. And hopefully I'll see more of y'all. If, you if you're not uh, subscribed and you like, want to be, I, I, I post like fuck all, dude. I don't post shit. So I will not spam you. I will not bother you, I promise. Um, but if you want to subscribe, that'd be super cool. I'm kind of on a mission to get enough subscribers to where I can go live from mobile. Because I spend most of my time like out in the world, not sitting in the studio. And I've always loved to be able to bring guys along on my little adventures. They are, I crack myself up at any rate. Okay, I have a good time. Why not come along? So subscribe, check me out, drop a like. I'll see you with the comments. Maybe drop a share. There's nothing even controversial here. You don't got to hide this from your friends and family, all right? Thank you so much for coming out, you guys. It's been real. Peace.